All right, here I wanted to talk about mallets a little bit and to a lesser extent hammers. So what kind of mallet do you want for using leatherworking tools? Well, there's a couple things to consider. One, most leatherworking tools are lathed to some extent. So they have grooves in them. They have bite to them. Not all of them do, but even the ones that don't have pretty sharp edges. Another thing to consider is that whether you're using a setter, a punch, a fork, or anything like that, most of the time you're going to be holding it. There's not really going to be a point where you're not holding it. It's not like a nail where once you set it, you can let go and then continue to drive it. So if you have a big metal mallet like this, there's a very high probability that eventually you're going to miss and you're going to mess up your fingers. You're going to hurt your hand. The other problem with the big mallet like this is the face is way too hard. You're going to damage your tools with a metal mallet. Now I have a friend who's been a leather worker for 20 some odd years and he swears by a metal mallet. But when he's actively tooling, I've watched him snap the head off of one of these or just bend it almost to a right angle, hit his hands. He likes them because he doesn't mind buying new tooling stamps and he wants good, deep, sharp impressions with his tooling without much effort behind it. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and cased this piece of scrap leather and I've also blackened the surface so that hopefully this will show up good. I'm going to go ahead and test how well this does versus the lightest mallet I have. Well, that's a pretty good impression. Well, let's, let's do it also at a bit more of an angle so that it's a little deeper at the peaks there. And we get uh, two impressions there. And again, with a very light mallet. So I would say that the metal mallet is slightly better than the light mallet. But I don't think the difference is significant enough to justify wrecking your tools, possibly wrecking your hand. I mean, maybe for someone who can afford it, maybe they just don't care it, how, how much they spend on tools. They want to get it done fast, quick. Sure, but these little tooling stamps, those can be 2 to $5 each. And you might use one of those tooling stamps 5 to 30 times in a single project. This basket weave one, I'll show you what that looks like. I've used that to do an entire belt. And while I've had to file this to sharpen it back up a few times, it's, it's actually dull right now. It could use a filing. Having done probably well over 300 strikes with it, I've never had to replace it. If you take care of it, they'll last a while. So because you have a higher probability of injuring yourself and a higher probability of damaging your tools with a metal mallet, I wouldn't recommend it personally. But it's worth noting that at least one person with about 15 more ex years experience than I have does prefer them. That said, I've talked to other people who say, no, never use a metal mallet. Now, this is a rubber mallet. This one has actually had the bar purposely bent on it. Um, I understood that that was done because uh, someone needed to do some work at some angles. But for, for the purposes here, it's still fine. That barely made an impression. The thing about a rubber mallet is that it absorbs a lot of the force from a strike. You'll feel it sink around the tool. And it, it's really no good for making impressions in leather, for punching holes in leather. 
And then you have the cheap plastic mallet. Now you've seen me use this one already. And I'm going to say that a cheap plastic mallet, if you don't have a lot of money, you pick these up for $10 to $15, maybe a little less even, uh, eBay or some other place. And, you know, they work. They get the job done. They're a little, they're a little too light for me. And they also don't have enough bite to them for my taste. They do tend to slip. When you go to make a strike, if it slips a little bit to the side, or, you know, a little bit forward, a little bit back, when you go to strike, you're going to have an uneven impression or a hole that doesn't go all the way through or goes through more on one side than it does on the other. So, you know, it's serviceable. With a little practice, it will work, but it's not the best option. There's another kind of sort of, sort of plastic mallet out there. It's actually a vinyl mallet and it's made of, well, it's made of similar stuff to this, but I don't really like those. They're about as heavy as a rubber mallet, and I feel like their surface is too soft. Like they absorb too much of the impact. I mean, the same thing that makes them great for striking against makes them bad for striking with, in my opinion. Now, again, this is opinion based just through having used a lot, having talked to a lot of people who used a lot, but in my opinion the rawhide mallet is the best mallet go ahead and do another one of those at an angle there you get a plenty sharp enough stamp it has just the right amount of thud to it it has just the right amount of hardness and believe it or not, I've probably taken well over 3,000 strikes with this one. And there's kind of something fitting about hitting leather with rawhide. So this is my favorite kind of mallet, a rawhide mallet. Now, I did mention hammers as well. I have this little upholsters hammer. And I do occasionally use it in leather working. Um, if you saw my last video, or if you see this just sitting right here, uh, <laughs> this has nails in it, and that is leather. Same on this side. This is this is tacked down as well. If you're doing sleeves on wood, or you're making pads for stuff, even if you're just making little feet look something like that rubber foot, but made out of multiple layers of leather, you just run out of rivets. And especially if you're doing something like making shoes, you're going to find small reasons here and there where you do need to drive a nail or a tack or a staple through leather. Uh, sometimes you just need it to sort of give a little bit of correction, light correction to a rivet even. So having a lightweight hammer is, is pretty useful. You're not going to use it nearly as much with leather work as you are likely to use uh, your mallet. But it's not a bad idea to have one. And you can get away with a ball peen hammer. I like this. It's got a square face, a small square face on it. Even though you see some bevels on the edges there, the face is nice and flat and smooth. And these upholsters hammers even have a magnet in them, which makes setting a lot easier. Well, that's all I got for you. Have a good one.